All right, so just to show you how to do this, I'm gonna use the Bice Point demo case. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to modify my restoration types, and I'm just gonna show you how to do this on the centrals. Uh, the console will be applied to as many teeth as you want. So I'm going to design uh, telescopics on the centrals. Okay, it doesn't matter what type of uh, material you select here, it doesn't matter in anything, uh, um, any of the other parameters. So we'll select the two centrals as such, uh, select our correct occlusion here, just so we can save and then move on to the design. So the reason why I like this process better is because it, uh, it allows me to draw the window that I want rather than draw around the window and not have as much control. So I'm going to select to draw the margin of the, of the telescopic and then I'm going to draw the window in the shape that I want. Okay, so then I can see here all the, the necessary information in order for me to create the window. And we can do something along this line. Okay, we'll do the same thing on the other side to the other central. So let's just pretend that this is more or less what we want. The rest of the process is pretty straightforward. The only thing we want to do here is change the insertion direction for both of them and and have them have it be looking straight uh, straight out um, towards the facial. So we'll rotate the model to look at it from this point of view. Then we click set current view as insertion axis. Go to the next step. Here, uh, the only thing we, we could do is just to paint all so that there, there's no cement space at all. So we'll go ahead and paint all this green. And we'll move to the following step. Here it doesn't really matter what we do with these teeth, so we're just gonna create something like this. That would be good enough. Next step, it doesn't matter if that adapts and, and looks really funny, it doesn't matter to us. All we're after is uh, this result here. <clears throat> so we wanna keep uh, the secondary insertion direction in this, uh, aimed at, in, in that direction, and then we have, we have our telescopics. Now, by holding the control button, you can click on one of these arrows and just pull the entire structure out, which is more or less what we want to do. So we'll do this, and then we'll move forward to the following step, and then to the very last step. And yeah, it's gonna have to, uh, well, it shouldn't have to delete files. I just have uh, files that previously existed in this case folder. So the last thing we want to do is save each one of these structures separately. So we'll go ahead and uh, visualize one of them and click, right click on the save button, export scene to mesh. And then we can select the name for it. So I had already saved some attachments that were named uh, the same way. So we're just going to overwrite those. All right, so now we have all of that. The reason why we're saving this instead of using the STLs that are produced is that sometimes when the STL is produced, they lose their space and, and they lose their position in space. So we wanna make sure to keep that. And so once we're done with that, we can click I'm done. <clears throat> we don't need to save anything. And then we're gonna create our order form, uh, which is gonna be a byte split. It doesn't matter what, what manufacturing material or process you select here. You just want to create the, the splint. Okay, we'll click save and go into design immediately. All right, so we'll go through the design process as if we were doing a regular splint. Uh, first of all, decide how, how, how much of the uh, undercuts we want to expose. Make that correction, click next. Now. I, I always go with the default settings because I don't know what your manufacturing process might do to those default settings and the fit. So I would suggest that you start like this and then test it on, see if it fits. If not, then then we can you can start tweaking all, all the parameters. 
And so we get to this point and we'll go ahead and draw the, the split itself. Now, not claiming to be a clinician here, I understand that, that there are some measurements that need to be taken into account when designing the splint, especially because at some point, apparently, you you are supposed to design the splint, I, I think three millimeters above uh, what the where the window is, and mainly because apparently there's some bone reduction that goes into that, and so you're supposed to use that as a, as a guide as well as a bone reduction guide. Now, don't quote me on that. I don't know if that's right or wrong. I have no idea. That's just what I was told once. Okay, so we have our splint here. In the following step, you can freeform it all you want, take away some of the, some of the material, whatever you, you need to do. So let's imagine this is it. Okay, so we're really happy with, with, our, with our splint. In case that you really want to measure where you're supposed to draw this, one option that you have is to go into expert mode. You can go into tools, add remove mesh, select here from the drop down generic visualization mesh, load, and then select your two attachments. Click open and there will be perfectly aligned. You can combine them or not, it doesn't really matter. And so with that information in place, you could actually go back to the point where you're drawing the the line and then utilize either the grid in the background to determine more or less how, how much distance there ought to be. Or you can bring in, for example, a measurement tool and then just measure from, from, from there to there and see how, how much distance there is. So approximately the three millimeters that I was told that's required. So <clears throat> once you're done with the design process, Okay, we are going to go to freeform restorations. This is really important. Okay, so now we're gonna go into attachments. We're gonna go into subtract. And then in the library uh, menu, you're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom where it says load from file. So we're gonna bring that in and we're gonna bring each attachment individually. Okay, so that's perfectly placed where we want it to be. Make sure that you click here where it says allow any changes and click apply. Okay, and then that creates our window just like we drew it. And then we will do the same thing for the other the other window. Same thing, make sure this is checked, apply. And then there's a window. Then you click next, and now you have your final, you have the final uh, Ginger reduction guide. Now, one thing that I, that I should have shown is that you once you're done creating the windows, you can go back into the the free tab, and then you can freeform these corners if you need to. Okay, uh, you can be as careful as you need to be with that, and then you can create something that's a little a little less uh, sharp. But I don't think this this would really affect the functionality of this uh, structure as a guide. Now, as a last thing, I have to disclose here. This is supposed to be a medical device, and therefore you are not. I repeat, you are not supposed to design that with the ExoCAD. So as long as uh, I guess you could say, as long as you don't get caught. You, sh you should be fine. But if you get caught and they ask you which software you designed this on and you say ExoCAD, then you, you're you likely to get in trouble, um, especially in in uh, places where law matters like the Europe and the US. So just keep that in mind, uh, just a fair warning as well. And hopefully this helps. Cheers.